Here's the second of the introduction to materials for Unreal for absolute beginners. In the first video, we made this procedurally generated brass material just by plugging numbers in. And that's fine if the thing that you want to apply a material to is all made of the same kind of material. But in most cases, you're probably going to want old wood planks or a sandy ground, or you're going to want rusty metal or whatever. You're going to want a material that has more than one color and more than one surface attributes. And so for that, you're going to need to reach for texture maps. And there's a lot of places that you can get them. You can download them straight from the Quixel libraries right here inside of Unreal, and you can get them even out of the starter content has got some default textures that you can use. But eventually, you're going to want a very specific thing for whatever it is that you're creating, and you're going to want to go out onto the internet internet and find some great download sites like this, the ones I'm going to show you here in a second. Links in the description as well for more. Uh, or you can even go out with your phone and take photographs of something exactly what you want with a little bit of work in Photoshop or wherever you can make these materials from absolute scratch. But in this case, we're going to use one of my favorite sites. I'm going to jump over here onto the internet and find Polyhaven. It used to be called Texture Haven. There's also HDR Haven that you've probably heard about. They were combined together recently and now it's Polyhaven. I just clicked on the texture tab and I've searched up here for metal. And the one I want us to play around with is this metal plate because it has lots of things that we can talk about in here. I'm going to click on the metal plate and you'll notice that the author of this, also the host of the site, Rob, is a Blender user. And so these are all set up for Blender by default. And that's okay. You can download Blender stuff. Uh, it's got one problem that I'll show you how to fix. But in this case, we might as well, I'm going to switch over here from the Blender. I'm going to click on this little Blender icon, pop that open and just go to the zip file. So you can just download these as, as straight files here. Notice that I've got one K set right over here, and the download size for this is 6.26 .6 megabytes, which is, you know, that's a decent size. Um, and that's with just the things that I need turned on. You might want to say like, well, why wouldn't I use the best quality? I mean, there's 8K right here. Let's just jump to 8K. Well, let's see why you don't want to use 8K. Well, now it's 233.6 megabytes. So it gets a lot bigger, a lot fast, because these things uh, quadruple each time you go up a step. They don't just double. So I'm going to go back down over here to 1K. And and in most cases, if you're doing something for a game, if you're doing something that's going to be in the distance of a cinematic or it's not too important, 1K is usually fine. Only time you need to reach for things that are higher is if you know it's going to be really close to the camera or it's really important, like it's the character materials on your on your player character or something like that. And in most cases, 1K is fine. Okay, so I've turned off the Blender file because we don't need it. I've turned off the GTLF file. It's just a way to package the files. But I've got AO here. That's ambient occlusion. Remember, that's the kind of the shadows and nooks and crannies. Even though it's not going to do a lot for this material here because it isn't very concave, we'll download it anyway. I've got it set to download a JPEG. Uh, we're going to talk about this, uh, this packed material here, the ARM map, in a little bit. So let's add that one. I'm not going to worry about bump. We are going to bring in Diffuse because that's the color over here. I'm not going to worry about displacement. Right now in, in Unreal 5.2, they're kind of redoing displacement. It's a little awkward right now, so we're going to skip over that. I think in, in 5.3, we should see some improvements to displacement. You can do displacement with great results back in Unreal 4 and the earlier versions of 5. It just was a lot of steps, and it's more than we want to deal with right now. We're going to leave, bring in Metal. And we're going to bring in both normal maps. That's not something you're normally going to want to do, no pun intended. Uh, but in this case, I want to show you the difference between the two of these and talk about why and how you can fix them. And, and then roughness. We'll bring in the roughness map. So go ahead and hit the download button, and then you can open up that file, unzip it, and then open up the files. And I've already done that on my computer, so I'm just going to jump back over here into Unreal. And then I'm going to open uh, Control and Spacebar to open up the content drawer. And I'm going to find my little texture folder that I made, double click on it, and I've already brought in all of these various textures for this metal plate material. All right, so let's go back to my materials. I'm going to right click to create a new material. And I'm just going to come up to a little shortcut and say create basic asset material. I'm going to grab that here. And we're just going to call this plate. And I'm going to then double click on it to open up the material graph editor. So here we are. Uh, it's got nothing going on right now except the fact that it's named plate because that's what we named the material. And what we need to do first is to start dragging in those texture maps. So I'm going to control and spacebar again to open up the content drawer even inside the material graph. It's going to be fine for us. Oh, and by the way, notice I've actually docked this because it's probably going to bring it in loose like this for you. So I'd like to just grab the little tab up here and just plug it in right up at the top so that I can and go back between my map and my materials. And I can choose when to close the materials. That way I'm not hunting all over my screens trying to find something. It's up to you to do, but that's what I've done over there. So if yours doesn't automatically show up like that, all you need to do is grab that little tab, 
pop it up over, over there and you can have multiple materials. You can cut and paste between materials. It makes it really easy. I'm going to go back to that control space bar, open up my texture folder. And I'm just going to click on the first on the left here, hold the shift key down and click all the way to the other end and click and drag and drop the whole stack here into the, the graph editor over here. So let's sort these out. I'm going to take this guy and push it over here. I'm going to take both of these normal maps and just set them off to the side for a second because we'll talk about those in a moment. Here is the roughness, I think. Uh, there's my ambient occlusion and here is the arm map. I'm going to set that off to the side. Okay, so let's start with the easy one. Here is obviously the diffuse map, the color, the base color here because we can see the picture of it over there. And we want the red, the green, and the blue channel in here. There's no alpha, so this is a JPEG, so it doesn't have an alpha channel anyway. But uh, we can just use the RGB output here, which is the typical one to use. I'm gonna click and drag and plug that right into the base color and great, easy. We've just got that texture being wrapped around our sphere. I'm gonna come down into this tiny little icon that's a cube right there. I'm gonna pop that open and I'm just gonna use this here using the uh, left mouse button to orbit around and the scroll wheel to zoom in and out so I can see that. It doesn't make sense to put metal plate, kind of a flat thing on a sphere. I mean, maybe you might, but in this case, let's just take a look at it on a cube. I also don't think I mentioned in the first video that to pan around on the graph, you hold down the right mouse button and you graph. You use the, the zoom wheel to go in and out, the scroll wheel to zoom, uh, but the panning can sometimes be frustrating. That's gonna be a right click and drag to, uh, to scooch around in the scene. Okay, ambient occlusion is also easy. I'm just gonna grab the RGB and plug it right into ambient occlusion. Unlike in Blender, we don't have to do any mixing. It's got its own little input. Great, good to go. So now let's talk about these. So I'm not sure which one is which over here and why are they red? Well, if you're not sure what you're looking at, click on the texture sample. And remember, it's gonna give you in the details panel, the name of that texture. You might need to grab the side there and trombone it out a little bit so you can see what it says, but metal plate rough. Okay, well that's our roughness map. So I can take this and I'm gonna plug that right into the roughness channel, that's great. So now we're getting different amounts of roughness and that means this is our metal map. So sure enough, metal. And the reason why this is a, a, a metal map that isn't just black and white is because the parts of the rust and the paint or whatever are creating a little mask more than a map. Uh, you could plug in both the red channel or the RGB channel into either one of these. I'm gonna plug the RGB in just because why not? Plug that in there, but it could also be the red channel. Why are these red? They're not always, oftentimes they're gray, they're grayscale. They look just like the ambient occlusion map over here. And the reason why they are red is because of the channel packing that's going on over here. You don't need all three channels if all you're looking for is black and white data. So mo in many cases, you can get away with just one of these channels and this channel, this color has been packed onto the red channel. That's why they look red. So pulling in the red pin or the RGB pin is gonna do the exact same thing. And it's not gonna hurt you um, one way or the other. So that's the reason why these are red. It's not always that case, in fact, it's a little rare, um, but they are in this case. So now let's talk about these normal maps. So I'm gonna take a look at the two normal maps. I'm looking for the name. One is normal GL. Rob does a really great naming convention here. So metal plate underscore norm for normal, GL for open GL and underscore 1K. So all the information you need right there in the name of that. I really highly encourage you to use that naming convention yourself. Uh, so this is the one we want for Unreal, the DX, the, the uh, direct X. So I'm just gonna bring this over here and I'm gonna plug it from the RGB straight into the normal channel over here. But we're probably gonna get an error. Actually, surprisingly, we didn't get an error message. We will when we try to compile this here because this is set here, the sample type is set to linear color. And we'll talk about that here in a moment. Um, there's also kind of a, a problem going on with like, look kind of like pale these are looking. These should look a little bit more blue on that. So we'll, we'll fix these by double clicking on the texture sample and it's gonna bring us right to where it is in the content browser. So here's the correct one, the direct X. I'm gonna pop this open by double clicking on it. And then we see there's actually a pretty powerful image editor inside of Unreal here where we can do a lot of editing. We can change a lot of things uh, about our image. And for some reason it has brought this in. It's, it's guessed what it was when I dropped it in there and it says, oh, this is a HDR, like for an HDRI in here, which is not what this is. So I wanna pop this open and I wanna select normal normal map from this list here. So when I select normal map, it's like, oh, okay, well that's a better looking, this is this kind of purpley color. That's kind of what you want, a little bit richer, more saturated colors. But when I go ahead and close this now, I'm probably gonna get the error message, there it is now, right? So now it's like, why did it turn yellow? Why is it an error? Well, because it didn't think this was a normal map, it's brought it in as a linear color. So if you read the, the error here, again, this is kind of rare that it does this, but I'm glad it did. It's part of the reason why I chose this material because I want you to know how to fix these kinds of things. Just read what the error is. And it's basically saying sample type is linear color, should be normal, right? Well, we told it, it didn't give us the error before because we weren't saying it was a normal map. But as soon as we said it was a normal map, it says, oh, well then in that case, this is wrong. 
easy fix. So just come down here to go to linear color and select normal from that list. Super easy, that gets rid of the error. And now if you look over here in the preview image, we're getting that kind of faked height into it that we want from the normal map. So fantastic. Well, what do you do if you have found the perfect material that you want to use, the perfect textures, and it's off of a site that does not have OpenGL? Well, obviously you can't use that material, right? Nope. Super easy fix. So here is the wrong one, that OpenGL made for Blender and others that use OpenGL. I'm gonna double click on this. We're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna pop this open. We know that it's this is wrong, so let's fix that first. I'm gonna come down over here to the normal map. We're gonna get that. Notice what's going on over here with the colors on this. So now this is looking right on our screen. Look where the magenta and the cyan is on here. So the magenta kind of looks like it's light from the underside, and then the cyan looks like it's from above. Well, that would work just fine. This would work okay, you're not gonna get any errors, it's just that these will look like concavities, little dents in the material instead of little protrusions, right? This is like anti-slip grating on some metal plate or whatever, so these are raised bumps as opposed to concavities. So it's gonna read it the other way around unless we fix it. And the easiest thing to do is just to search, it's way down here somewhere in the list, but um, I'm just gonna search for green up here and here, and we've got flip green channel, which is exactly what we need to do. So it's green up or green down is the, what's happening here in these two different OpenGL or DirectX. They're just going the other direction. So if I just check that little box, basically I've turned this OpenGL normal map into a DirectX normal map. So it's all good. You can save it if you want to. I think it doesn't really need to, in this case, pop that open. And that's giving us that same error over here. So the way you fix that, I've got this one selected as opposed to that one. See the orange border? I'm gonna come down here from linear color, go up to normal. That one's useful too. So these are now identical. We could use them together. And even though these are different maps going in different directions, they'll be perfectly fine. All right, so now let's just talk about what's going on with this. I'm gonna actually deselect, yeah, ambient occlusion. I'm just gonna hold down the Alt key to just click on these. If I hold the Alt key and click, I'm just breaking these nodes. I'm gonna push these off to the side over here. I'm gonna push off the, the ambient occlusion, the metal and the uh, the roughness. And I come over here and grab this weird orangey one over here. So if I double click on this one, just so you can see what's going on. This is called a packed texture. And the reason why you'd want to do this, especially for games, it doesn't matter if you're doing a cinematic and you've got you know plenty of time to render or whatever, but in games, this is a great way to save texture space. And I can double click on this and I can go back to our little editor and you can look at these individually by channel. So if I turn off all the channels, all, I get nothing, but if I turn the red channel, well, look, that's our ambient occlusion map. That looks just like the ambient occlusion. Remember I was talking about how we really just need shades of gray, right? Black to white, that's all we need. So we can get that done in one channel. So we turn off the red channel, turn on the green channel. Okay, well, there is our roughness in there. So I always remember grass is rough. Uh, so typically this is the um, the Substance Painter. Not everybody uses this exact same setup at Substance Painter uh, and a lot of different texture sites will put them in this order. Sometimes they're ORM for uh, occlusion and then roughness and then metallic. So if you see that, same thing. So uh, if I turn off the green, I'm gonna turn on the blue and look, there is our metal. And I remember that because blues and metal are both kinds of music. <laughs> so it's just the way that I remember it. Whatever works for you is fine. So if I turn them all on, we get this weird peachy color thing that we're seeing. So we don't need to mess with this. I'm just showing you what's going on with this. All we need to do is pull off these pins, right? And so if you can't remember, well, what, what order were they again? It's gonna be right there in the name. So this is named ARM, right? So that's ambient occlusion roughness metal. So the ambient occlusion is coming off of the red pin, the first one. There's the ambient occlusion plug back in. Green is grass, right? Roughness, plugging that one in. And then blues is, and metal uh, are both music. So I'm gonna plug that one in. So now we're basically, we're getting the exact same result from this one texture sample as we got from all three of these. And it doesn't have to be just those textures. It could be other ones in here. It could be, you could have opacity on one channel and you could have subsurface color or whatever. Lots of other things that you can use uh, to get those results. So either way, this is gonna look exactly the same as if we'd left all these plugged in. Grab all those and just hit delete. <laughs> Zoom back in again here so I can see what I'm doing. So now this is all we need. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. I'm gonna come back to our map. And then I'm gonna apply this. I'm gonna make sure that it's selected in here. Oh, I got the texture selected. So let me go up and grab plate. And then I, well, I'll just click and drag it because it's easy right there. Remember you can always, what I start to do is you can click on that little arrow to uh, select it, or you can grab it from the list. Any one of those will work just like we learned last time. And hit the F key to focus on that cube. And there we go. We can get the sense like, oh yeah, part of it is rough, but part of it isn't. The paint looks a little shinier 
than the uh, the rusty bits that make sense there. Um, so we're getting the material on this object. I'm gonna show you one last thing to do with this material because like, all right, I like this, but maybe it's a little too small or it's a little too big. So we'll get into this in the next material where I show you how to make a prime material that you can use for all different kinds of things. But let's just make a simple way to control the scaling of this on here. And so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna have you, uh, trust me on this, hold the U key down, hold down the U key on your keyboard and left mouse click on the graph. And that's gonna bring up a texture coordinate U for UV maps, right? So there's our texture coordinate that's gonna be useful for us. We wanna multiply that, hold in the M key for multiply. This doesn't work for every node that you can add in here, obviously, but it does work for ones that are very common. So we're gonna wanna plug this guy into uh, the A channel over there. And we could just change the, the results here with this one channel, but let's go and do one more over here. I'm gonna hold the S key down for a scalar. So I'm gonna click S and a scalar. Oops, that always happens too if I hold the key too long. And we'll call this scale. The scale is showing up over here in the details panel and there's a default value. So right now the default value is set to zero. I'm gonna plug this into the B channel and then I'm gonna plug this in. We'll plug them into all of the UVs here, but we'll just start with the image sample up there. It's like, well, that looks really weird. What's going on here is that it's scaled the diffuse map now without scaling into the other ones down. So it looks really odd. Uh, but if I come over here and set this default value, I can also set it over here to one and hit enter, then it's gonna make it look exactly like it was before. So that's just saying exactly like it was, multiply this by one, that's gonna get the same result as not plugging this in. Except I'm gonna plug this in, pulling off of this into the normal map and the arm map over there. And now when I change the scalar, if I ch set the default value to two, then it's putting in, it's doubling it. It's putting in two samples worth of that across that surface, in a sense, making it smaller. If I make it 0.5, it's gonna go in the other direction and it's gonna make it a lot bigger. And then in the future, when I show you how to create instances of these, you can actually do this in the editor. You don't have to come in and change the values. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to, well, let's just try three. We'll make it like times three, and then I will go ahead and save it just in case. I'm gonna go back to the map over here, you can see, oh, okay, there's the same material that we have, but you can see that it's much smaller. It's like, it's being repeated three times across the surface over here, and that makes the material smaller. So that's one of the many ways we can, I'll show you how to rotate them, how to offset them so you can line edges up or whatever. Lots of things that you can do when we make a more advanced material in a little bit. But here, at least now you know how to bring in any kind of images from any source where you find them, and plug them in to create your own materials. And that's gonna give you a huge range of potential materials to use in your projects.